Hi everyone, alright so I'm going to show you the easiest method to send a Daz character over to Blender. Once it's set up you'll be able to create a Daz character like this. Head over to Blender and you'll see that there's a Daz plugin over here. You'll be able to click on import Daz file and then I can just go over to the folder over here and I can simply just click on import Daz file. So it's going to import that character with all of the materials applied correctly. So it becomes a one click solution once everything is set up. And there we go, you can see there's my Daz character and if I head over to uh, the different shading viewports you can see I've got all of those materials applied onto there and it just saves you a bunch of time and a whole lot of clicks because you can just quickly iterate, maybe create a new pose and just send that over to Blender. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so check the link in the description of the top comment. We're going to be using a free plugin called Diffeomorphic. So I've provided you with a link that goes to this page. All you need to do is click on download a repository and it's going to download a zip file with the Diffeomorphic plugin. Alright, so I've got my zip file over here. Let's open up Blender. Let's go to Edit Preferences. Go to Add-ons and click on Install. Go to the desktop and find the zip file or wherever you saved it to and click on Install Add-on. Once that's installed, you're actually going to get a plugin over here that's called Import Export Daz. And if I click on this drop down arrow, you can see I'm using 1.4.2. And then over here on the right hand side by this arrow, or if I press N, uh, you'll see that we've got a Daz plugin that's installed over here and we'll be able to import Daz files directly into Blender. Now maybe you've got some messages talking about uh, setting up the library paths and all of that. Don't worry about that. I'll show you how to set that up correctly because that's probably the trickiest part about this plugin is setting up the correct uh, library paths so that you can send over the files correctly with all of the materials. But I'll show you my paths over here and we'll be doing that shortly. Alright, so before we set up these library paths, we need to set up the plugin in Daz Studio. And there's a specific file that we need which is a script file that was created with Blender when we installed the Daz file. So in order to find that script file, remember I'm doing this on Windows, I wouldn't know how to find this file on Mac, but on Windows over here by the search option, you want to type percentage app data percentage and it's going to bring up this folder. So open up this folder. Let's go to the Blender Foundation, Blender. I'm still using 2.83 and I want to go into scripts, add-ons, diffeomorphic and then there's another folder called to Dare Studio and this is the file that we want over here. So just drag, actually just click on copy and just paste this on the desktop because we're going to need the script file in Daz to set up uh, the export process. Now go ahead and open up Daz Studio. Right, so now press F3, that's going to bring up this window called Customize Daz Studio. Now here under Custom, if I click on this plus icon, you can already see I've set up my export to Blender. But let me show you how to create this custom script option. So under Custom, you want to right click, click on Create New Custom Action. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just call this Test and call this Test. So now you can see over here it's asking for that script file. Let's click, click on these three dots. I'm going to go to my desktop, here's my, uh, my script file and click on Open and you want to click on accept. Alright, so once that's done, you want to go to the menus option over here while this is still selected and we want to click on main menu bar, click on and file and over here you'll see that there's an export option. So now you want to drag test into export but make sure when you're dragging it, you can see I'm still holding down my left mouse button, I'm dragging it right here next to export because if you start dragging it from the top it starts selecting everything. And that's not what you want to happen. So just drag it here by export and drag and drop it. Now you can see it's it's been applied over there. Now I can simply click on apply and click on accept. So now if I go to file, you can see that I have the test option uh, which has been created. Uh, but in, in your case, like I said, you should probably name it export to Blender. So everything is set up with the DAS to Blender bridge and we can now start sending over files but we still have to adjust those library paths in Blender. Alright, so this next part of the tutorial is where a lot of people have issues with setting up this plugin. There is documentation on the Diffeomorphic website if you're still having some issues but I'm going to show you how I set up my paths. Okay, so by default if you go back into Blender and you go to Settings and then you go to Paths to Daz Library if you're on Windows, it should automatically generate some paths for you. Now by default, I have my DAS installed on the C drive. You'll have to find out wherever you installed your DAS. The most important path to take note of is this first path over here because this is telling the plugin where all of your library files are, where all of your characters are, where all of the textures are. If, if the plugin cannot identify this path, you will never be able to send over your files with the textures and you're just going to encounter a whole lot of issues. So to find this path, Go into Daz, here on the right by Content Library, 
you'll see that there's an option here called Dare Studio Formats. Now by default, I have all of my files organized under one folder that's just called Dare's 3D. So I've got everything in here, all of my characters, all of my textures. So what you want to do is you want to right click on this folder and click on Browse to Folder Location. So it's going to open up that folder on my computer and this is the exact path where all of these files are installed. So to actually gain access to this path, you can see over here, this is the main path here, DAS3D. I'm just going to click on my DAS3D library. So this is the folder over here. If I double click on that, you can see I got all of these files in here. Let me just go one more folder back. If I hold down shift and right click, it's going to bring up this option. Then I can just simply click on copy as path. All right. Now, if I go back to Blender over here on this first option, let me just erase this. If I press control V right now, it's going to go ahead and paste that path but you'll see that there's some, um, what do you call it, uh, inverted commas over here. I want to make sure I'm removing them so that I've just got the path like this. So it's my C users, public documents, my DAS3D library and DAS3D. Once that's set up, I know for a fact that it's referencing this path with all of my characters and all of my textures and this should be good to go. Then it generates two other paths for you. All right, this C public documents and then another C program files. But the most important one is this first path, because if the program cannot identify this path, you are never going to be able to send over files. So just find out wherever your DAS is installed and make sure that the path is correct. Okay. And then once your path has been set up correct, you can click on this load and save settings and then, and then just click on save default settings so that it saves that path. Whenever you open up Blender, you don't have to do this process over and over again. And then if you want to, you can even save the settings file and save a backup. All right, so at this point we are done. We've officially set up the plugin correctly. And now we can just simply send over DAS files directly to Blender with all of the textures applied. And this is what makes this plugin really awesome. So the only limitation I've noticed with this plugin is that you can't send over animations. You can only send over static poses, but it's still useful. If you're trying to generate a whole lot of different poses, you can do that. Definitely go ahead, check, the, check out the documentation and experiment with some of the other settings. You, I see you can even import expressions and morphs and all of that, but I only use this plugin to just quickly send over static uh, poses that are completely, that has got all of the materials applied to it. So let's head over to Des, and now go to the actors wardrobe and props, go to figures, and I'm just going to use the basic Genesis 3 female. So you should have access to this. If you don't, open up your Des install manager and download the essentials for the Genesis 3 male and female. So I'm going to double click on this. It's going to create a Genesis 3 female and I'll continue from there. I'm just going to put some clothes on the female so that this video doesn't get flagged for nudity. All right, so I just put some of the basic wear clothing on my character over here. Now to send this over to Blender is super, super easy. We just need to save two files. So go to file. You want to first save this as a scene, right? You want to make sure you create a new folder on your desktop. So I created a folder called tutorial and I'm just going to call this girl and click on save. So it's going to save this DSON file. And then I want to go to file and remember that script we set up, just click on export to Blender and this is going to save it as a .dbc, a dbz file. You want to make sure the file name is exactly the same, right? So girl and girl, click on save. It's going to save this out. There we go. You'll get this message that pops up. And now if we head over to Blender, we just simply need to click on import DAS file. So let's go ahead and find that tutorial folder. Now you want to click on the .duff file. And make sure over here by opaque that you change this to principle. It just, it's easier to work with the materials if you need to do that later on. If you want to adjust anything, just put the opaque on principle, refractive on principle, and then click on import DAS file. So there we go. It's going to go ahead and import our character into Blender. And there we go. So now if I just go ahead and I hide the overlays, and let's say I go to the viewport shading, you can see we've got our character in the T pose. And it's just applied all of those materials on there for us. Everything with the eyes, everything involving alphas, like with the eyelashes. It sends everything over correctly, the normal maps. And this obviously works with EV and cycles because it's got all of those materials applied. If I go to the shading option over here, right? And let me just click on, uh, you can see over here it imports the Genesis 3 female. If I click on this drop down arrow and actually click on Genesis 3 female, you can see it even separates the shorts and the top. So everything is nice and organized. Let's say I want to click on Genesis 3 female 
click on the materials tab you can see we've got all of the different uh, parts of the character all organized into these different layers and you can see everything has been automatically set up for us onto a principled BSDF so if you need to adjust anything roughness or if you want to bring in normal maps and all of that you can do that very very easily but everything is set up for you like I said in the end it becomes a one-click solution you you essentially just saving out a project file and the export to blender file and then importing that into into blender right, you can go to the shorts right select the, the shorts again everything nice and organized and if I want to I can maybe change some of the colors over here you can see that I've changed that to blue but everything is set up it's super easy it's a huge time saver once this plugin has actually been set up for you you can see I simply just went into Daz put this character in the T pose and I sent it over really quickly and easily and then if you were creating iterations you would create another folder uh, with a different pose and then import that all right so that's it guys I know it was a little bit of a process to set up but trust me it's going to save you a bunch of clicks later on especially if you want to quickly send over characters and you don't have to worry about connecting all of those maps because that's obviously it's time consuming to connect to fuse normal and all of that if you can create a quick one essentially a one click solution for yourself then why not save yourself some clicks and it's just a nice way to send over DAS files correctly uh, over to Blender Right, and if you're still encountering issues, remember that you can head over to the diffeomorphic.blogspot.com, click on DAS Importer version 1.4. Okay, and then if you scroll down, there's some documentation over here that gives you a detailed uh, outline of how to install the plugin. But I thought I'll just show you in video format how to set this up. So everything is working, everything is good to go, and now you can officially start importing your characters into DAS. Uh, now I noticed that. Uh, especially if you're using real time with EV, if you've got a character with a lot of materials, it can actually really slow down your viewport performance. So use it with caution, don't go overboard. Uh, or maybe you've got a really beefy computer and your computer can handle it. Uh, it depends. But anyway, this is set up. I hope this has been useful for you guys. Go ahead, send over your DAS characters. Let me know if this is working for you in the comments. And as always, I truly appreciate the support on this channel. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. And goodbye.